Hey there, this video was going to show you how to replace the steering stem bearings on a 2008 Honda CBR 1000. These steps are going to be about the same for uh, any bike you might ever need to change the steering stem on. Um, it's, it's pretty much the same basic task to do all of them. This job and rebuilding your fork seals is probably the worst you'll ever do on a motorcycle. Because everything on the front of the bike has to come off for you to get the forks out and then remove the steering stem. So the first thing we're doing is loosening up all the bolts that hold everything down. Um, loosening the bolts and the calipers. Uh, I've loosened the bolt for the um, axle, the front axle, and I've loosened the pinch bolts on the front of the forks. So with my trusted pit bull stand, I'm going to pop the bike up into the air and just start pulling things off the front of the bike now. So with the zip tie, uh, because the front of the bike has to come off, if I were just replacing the rear tire, or the front tire, um, I probably wouldn't zip tie the calipers out of the way. But since I need to have these calipers out of the way when I pull the forks off and get that triple tree out of the way, um, I'm going to zip tie the caliper over by the radiator just to keep it out of my work area. And I'm loosening these screws on the fender just to make it a little bit quicker later on when I go to pull this fender off.
So with the calipers off, um, we're just going to pull out the front axle. There's no need to pull the spacers or anything out of the wheel. Just leave those spacers in the wheels um, and set that wheel out of the way. And then with our hex tool, we're just going to remove these four screws that hold the front fender on. And be careful with this fender. Don't fight getting the fender off. The last thing you want to do is scratch your paint. And I promise you, if you scratch your paint every time you're wiping down your bike, you're going to hate yourself for it. So the fender comes off at the lower fork tube. And if you just grab the fender and squeeze it together, it'll give you enough room to slide the fender through the forks. But like I said, be very careful. Then we want to remove the 8mm screw that's holding your brake lines to the lower triple tree. So this was a dead giveaway that something was wrong. This nut should not have been that loose. And the reason I'm doing this is this bike was in a very, very bad accident. And uh, every time I work on this bike, I just thank God that the owner, Walter, is still alive and with us today. Um, but I had the bike, I had the front end all aligned and going down the highway the both the handlebars and the triple tree were cocked and I have I have the forks aligned in the triple tree and the, the wheel everything is in perfect alignment but when you look down at the triple trees it was still it was still cocked pretty bad so um, I knew that there was something worse wrong with it other than just uh, the handlebars, the left clip-on is bent in about two inches, which you can't see in this video. So that made the hand that made the handlebars. When you're sitting on the bike, the handlebars were weird, so you were sitting weird on the bike. And then when you look down at the triple tree, it was moved, so that was pretty bad too. When I pulled it all apart, I found that. Uh, the bearings, the bearings were um, not in <coughs> the frame tight, and the steering stem was bent just a little bit. So, like I said, this bike was in a very bad accident. Right now, I'm going to take ratchet straps and put them through the frame, and I'm going to hang the the bike from the support of my loft in the garage and you can do this if you have like an engine hoist you can jack your bike up just you know be careful so remember my bike is still on a pit bull stand so I'm just removing some of the weight off of the pit bull stand and I want the bike to hang evenly. It's easier to align the bike if it's hanging freely than try to fight with a bunch of stands. So we have our hex tool and we're loosening the two hex screws that are holding the triple tree and the clip on onto the fork. We want to do those first. So this right clip on, I'm pretty sure it's good. This is a 2008 model. 
the 2005 clip-ons are the same size diameter for the fork even though it's a different part number it's still the pretty much the same clip-on in 2008 Honda removed uh, some of the material on the on the clip-on itself uh, I guess to lessen weight between the two clip-ons they probably lost two ounces so when we slide the fork tube out of the triple tree just slide it down be careful sometimes I'll coat it with oil to make sure it doesn't scratch and then see this metal clip that metal clip is what you're going to use to align everything when you put it back together so if you don't have that that little clip at the top of your fork that your clip on rests on you need to uh, go to bike bandit or somewhere and uh, order those two clips for the for the top of the fork sometimes I'll see a bike come through here that they've lowered the bike and forced the forced the fork up into the triple tree uh, and that means that they removed that clip um, and when you bring the bike back to the stock size you need to have that clip uh, you can also use a piece of safety wire if you wrap a piece of safety wire around the fork too that'll that'll help you align the bike a little bit easier and again with the left side just pull the fork out if you spray the fork down with uh, WD-40 it'll help that fork slide out of the triple tree a little bit easier so you're gonna need a spanner to get to the bearings not this size spanner though this was just a joke sorry so there's a little lock washer in there and you take your screwdriver and you push the tabs out of this lock out of the lock nut itself see how loose that is that nut should not have been that loose it should have been a little bit tighter in there then we take our spanner and we loosen the cap the bearing cap now what I noticed on this bearing cap is it's tweaked so when this thing went down um, and that steering stem moved it shifted it actually um, tweaked and dented that steering cap and that also allowed water to get in there so just little things to look at if your bike's been crashed and it's not going in a straight line when you start pulling it apart look for things that are out of place so like I said this this bearing cap isn't exactly perfect round anymore um, it, it was moved it was moved into the frame it was yeah it was dented up a little bit so there's your bearing seal it wasn't working that's your bearing race and then we just pull that lower triple tree out there's your ball bearings we're going to replace the ball bearings um, with tapered roller bearings so the steering will feel better but you can see the rust that's in there and there shouldn't be rust in there so that tells me that the steering cap is allowing moisture in and that'll be fixed when I put it back together. I'm going to put a liberal amount of marine grease in there. So moisture is not going to get in there in the future. Again, these roller bearings, those ball bearings are gone. We're going to replace it with uh, tapered roller bearings. Anytime that you have the opportunity to um, replace your steering stem bearings, don't replace them with the OEM bearings. Always go to tapered roller bearings. It's a one-time job. The tapered roller bearings will never go bad. Uh, 
and I found that typically I, I take a Dremel and I cut the bearing race off of the steering stem. Um, but I found that this this bearing race was actually on there pretty easy and I could just tap it off with the chisel. Um, this is a new steering stem. Um, this isn't the original one that I just, you watched me just pull off the bike. This is actually a new one. I went out to uh, eBay and bought one from a recycler. It cost me about 70 bucks off the bike with low miles that was parted out. So. And this is the proper way to pack a bearing. So you put the bottom of the bearing, the white part of the bearing, down and you force the grease from the palm of your hand through the bearing. And when it starts oozing out of the top of the bearing, then you know that that little section of the roller bearings has grease in it. And you can see in the video where the green grease starts to uh, spurt out of the top of the bearing and then you just move the bearing to the next section and start forcing the grease into the bearing and again I'm using Lubramatic marine grease we don't need a high performance high temperature graphite grease in your steering stem we just need to protect the steering bearings uh, from moisture, damage, um, and this grease is perfect for that. You know, if it's good enough for your boat trailer at high speeds going in and out of salt water, then this is absolutely going to be good enough for your steering, for your steering head um, bearings. So, yeah. You don't need the best grease in the world, um, just a good quality marine grease, like this Lubramatic marine grease is all you need. And once you've got the bearings packed, you know, go ahead and wipe grease on the entire bearing. And you, when you put it all together, you're going to put a nice coat of grease on the, the bearing seat and the uh, steering head when you put it on the bike. So there's your lower bearing in place. It's ready to go. And we're going to press that on. Don't get your hammer and beat these bearings on. If you don't have a press available to you, go down to your local machine shop. They might charge you 20 bucks to press that bearing on. It's worth paying the 20 bucks. Trust me. Don't don't just take a hammer and a pipe or something and put over your steering stem and start beating on that bearing. Nothing good will happen when you beat on a bearing. So we're doing the top bearing now. I just want to do it now while my gloves are all nasty and get the top bearing ready to go. And I have I have two workshops at my house and I'm, I'm actually doing this t chore in my garage normally when I build a bike I build it in my workshop under the house and that's where all my heavy tools are so I have my I have my press under the house so here's my press and this is just a cheap press similar to the craft they sell at Harbor Freight. These presses are not expensive. I bought this one used for $20. So there's no reason why you can't find one out there for real cheap. This press was probably only two or three hundred dollars when it was brand new. But you can hear how much pressure is being put on that bearing to slide it onto onto that steering stem. That would be a lot of wax with the hammer. And one wrong whack with a hammer and you're going to destroy that bearing. And then you're going to have to cut that bearing off of the steering stem and buy a new one. So just go to your go to your local machine shop and have them press the bearing on.
it only takes them a couple minutes. So that bearing seated, it spins good. And now we're back at the bike and we need to remove the bearing races that are in the steering head. So when you look down into the steering head, you'll see where there's grooves in the steering head which will allow you to hammer out the old races. Many years ago on older bikes, it wasn't this easy. But I imagine Honda in their infinite wisdom, they looked at it and they said, well, we can reduce some weight here. And they lost another ounce by grinding out a spot to put your punch so you could get those um, bearing races out. The bearing races don't last forever, so uh, the bearings and the bearing races don't last forever. So it's nice that they did that. And anytime you do replace the bearings in your motorcycle, make sure that you replace the bearing race also. The bearings and the race are a matched part. So even if you're going to put those crappy ball bearings back into your motorcycle, make sure you knock out these races and put the new races that came with the bearings back in your bike. So there you go. There's the top race out of the way. And I already punched in the bottom one, but the top one's gonna be the same way that I did the bottom. So I just tap it so it's into place. And then I take a socket that's the same size as the outer edge of the race. And I use that socket to beat the race into place. By using a socket, I'm not destroying the inner race area where the bearing rolls. So you want to protect that. And this socket is, this is actually an older Craftsman socket back when Craftsman made good tools. Um, but I figure if I destroy the socket, it's okay. I can just take it back to wherever they sell Craftsman and get a new socket. Unfortunately, the re replacement socket is going to be some China-made junk that's not going to have the uh, tensile strength is what an old U.S.-made socket. But for as many bearings or as many times as I'm going to use this to beat a bearing in, it's not going to hurt this socket at all. That and if I, I'm old enough now that if I'm still doing this in 20 years, I'm going to be an old man doing this. So that socket will be all right, and uh, it'll probably be all right for the next guy who gets it when I die. So that race is almost into place right now. You, you can actually hear it and feel it when the race is, is perfectly into place. So on the lower triple tree, I did coat everything with a heavy coat of grease. And with that heavy coat of grease on the bottom, <clears throat> it'll help keep the moisture out. And then I'm putting a heavy coat of grease on the race up top. Hey. And any of that extra grease uh, will get forced down inside the steering stem area. And then I'm going to take a, a nice handful of this marine grease. If you remember when I took this apart, there was rust in there. And with the amount of marine grease that I'm going to put on top of this bearing, um, along with that cap, when I tighten that cap down, it's going to really seal this in so um, I don't have to worry about water getting into this steering stem again. 
and there's my seal so with the grease and that rubber seal around the outside it, it should keep that bearing dry I'm, I'm confident thinking that that bearing is going to be dry in 10 years if I ever have to do this again to this bike I hope not I hope when this bike leaves it it'll only come back for tires and it'll be in as nice a shape as when I sent it out of here So our bearing cap, we're going to tighten this down. So this cap, if you hear some people talk on the interwebs about tightening up their steering, you can do it if you don't have if if you don't have um, or you have really loose steering steering feel, you don't have a steering dampener on your bike. You can take the your upper triple tree off and you can tighten this down and it'll give you a little bit better steering feel I, I personally like a tighter steering feel but it's really all about you so right now I'm gonna get this this cap I'm gonna get it as tight as I possibly can with this small spanner And then if it needs to be adjusted, if it's too loose in about a thousand miles, I'll come back in and I'll take the uh, upper triple tree off and tighten it down a little bit more. But it probably is going to be pretty good. So I almost got it where I need it. I just want to come down here and see how tight it is. So for me, that's still kind of loose. It's, it's turning way too freely than, than I personally like it. And as those bearings start to wear in, it's going to loosen up also. So I gave it one more, one more little tug just to uh, tighten it up just a little bit more. And then we can start putting the bike together. So here is our little retainer, and this is kind of a lock washer. It'll keep that steering stem from backing out. And if you remember, the, the nut that was on top of this was really loose. It was only finger tight. So that's not going to happen this time. We're going to put at least 15 pounds of torque on this nut to uh, snug it down. And we're going to turn it to where it lines up with the tab and I can just hammer that tab in. So when I come back to take this apart in the future, it's not going to come off just finger tight like it did right now uh, when, I, when I took it apart. So with my screwdriver, I'm just bending those tabs back into place. And then we can put our upper, upper triple tree cover back on. And this is as far as I took the video. Um, you're already watching a half hour. It's just too much. I did not do a video showing you how to do the forks in. It's late at night right now. So I just wanted to put the bike back together and get it all lined up. So I can do other things tomorrow. So we're just going to put the nut on to hold it in place. We're not going to tighten this nut down. We're going to put the forks in and uh, align everything. And then the last thing we'll do is put a wrench on that nut and tighten it back into place. So that's how we replace the steering stem bearings. Um, thanks for watching my video. I hope you got some information out of it. Um, it's always a pleasure doing these videos for y'all. Thanks for watching.